Hello and welcome everybody to this second webinar about from Tickmill uh, about the Volsys platform. Uh, hi, I'm Eduardo Burattini. I'm glad to introduce myself. Uh, I will. This will be our second appointment together to have a, a look at what the features of the Volsys platform are and how they can be used in a simple way to improve our trading. Uh, I hope you can all hear me properly and you can see my screen as well. Uh, please give me a feedback in the chat if you can. And uh, let me show first of all our disclaimer and we will get started in a couple minutes. Okay, everything everything seems to be working properly. Great, so let's get started. And uh, today, uh, first of all, I hope you all enjoyed the last uh, webinar we had last Friday, last Monday. Uh, we talked about uh, how why volume is important and how it can be used uh, to uh, detect if uh, a market move is a trendy move or uh, it can be be a clue of something different uh, happening in the market. So basically, if a uh, market is trending correctly or basically if a change is about to happen. Today, uh, we will be uh, have an overview of uh, a deeper overview actually of uh, the Volsys platform and uh, how we can use some of its features, some of its tools to uh, improve our trading. So we will basically go a little deeper into the magic world of volume. And uh, this is basically an introduction to what uh, will be uh, a series of topics we will be talking about from uh, next webinar uh, going on, which will um, it will be something more uh, deeper in terms of theory about trading volume. So we will be talking about uh, volume profile. We'll be talking about VWAP. We will be talking about order flow. So uh, this is still an introduction. <laughs> Last time we had uh, an overview about the world of volume. Today we will be uh, together to just have a look at what uh, some of uh, volume tools can be uh, applied and uh, uh, get getting how to getting them to work on the platform. So uh, first of all, uh, the something that I had forgotten about tell you last time was that uh, in this environment, uh, of course, even if we are connected through a data feed. So in this case, we have a Tickmail Live account. Uh, being connected at the moment, uh, we still can place trade uh, trades on a simulated account. Okay, so uh, we can easily switch between a, a live account and a simulated account, and in this way we can just have uh, some. Uh, <laughs> We can put some simulate some simulated trades on, and basically get them get them working. Maybe we have a strategy that we are uh, trying, or uh, we are there is something that we are uh, we don't need still confident to, and we want to uh, just make some simulated trades. This is a very simple way to do that. So uh, this is something that is not obvious and i wanted to <laughs> tell you today uh, something of course another very important info is that uh, volumetric car trading offers uh in this uh, occasion because we are making this promotional event with thick mill uh, there is a very a very cool promo going on uh, which you can uh, uh, access following the link i'm sending in the chat right now uh, so 
here it is okay and uh, basically this pro will be uh, active till the end of the of this period of then of these te 10 weeks we will be together okay going through topic by topic regarding volume so today uh what i wanted to show you is basically how to get this platform running okay last time we had a look of how we can uh, put orders in and basically manage orders and today we will uh go ahead talking about some of the of its tool uh, some of its indicators and how to uh, put them on the chart, how to get them working, basically. So uh, the platform, as you can see, uh, is structured into workspaces. So at the moment, I have two workspaces open. This is the main, the main bar. And here you can see two squares. Basically, each square represents uh, an open workspace okay uh right now i have a workspace dedicated to es so s p 500 and another workspace dedicated to uh to the nasdaq and uh, this is only my way of making things simple especially uh because i need to perso personally for my uh trading habits i need to overlook more charts of the same instrument so for instance right now the selected workspace is the one of the nasdaq and here as you can see i have a two minute chart open okay within the workspace i have as you can see here on the main bar i have more charts open about the nasdaq basically each one of this chart has different settings okay because uh personally i have to uh look at the same time at more different informations uh this is something very useful because it allows you to uh to have all of the uh chart i need to have open for a single instrument to have them open all together so i can easily switch from for example, this is the order flow chart, the chart containing the footprint chart we will be talking about in a few weeks. But I can easily switch from this one to the main two minutes chart. OK, and this is because they are uh, enclosed together in one single workspace. OK, and uh, uh, of course, every single chart uh, can be open together and maybe if you want you can even sort them into the same screen area just by playing with the uh, with the button on the top of the window so you can just yeah making it smaller and then dragging dragging if you want and making it larger uh, whatever uh this is something really useful in my opinion because uh many times uh happens that you have to look in this at the same time at different chart maybe different instruments and different tools all together uh something still very important you can do with this kind of uh representation is that you can make drawings like for example Normally, I, the basic setting I have for this chart, which is the chart I use for the uh, macro uh, analysis, it will be 30 minutes. And for example, here, you can easily change the time frame by just clicking the uh, space button and then typing 30 and four minutes and easily switch from two minutes to 30 minutes like this just a couple minutes to let the chart build yeah this is the shortcut basically otherwise 
you can easily change both time frame and type of chart from this menu here at the top left. So what kind of chart we have available here in Bolsis? We have, of course, minute-based charts, daily or weekly or monthly based chart. Then we have got Vault Bars, which is uh, something very innovative, uh, in my opinion, because it allows you to have a specific chart easily showing market rotation. So what is a market, what do I mean for market rotations. Let's make an example and uh, let me get a different chart so we can make the example easier. Yeah. For example, if I want to, let's say, set here on the NASDAQ uh, vol bars based chart, I have to choose between two parameters, which are basically a bar target, which it will be the first parameter to be met in order for a bar to, to form, uh, which is basically a, a number of ticks or specific ticks the bar have to move in one direction. Okay, so for the NASDAQ, maybe we can, yeah, we can specify, I don't know, maybe 15 ticks as a target and then we need to indicate a reverse amount in terms of ticks. So let's leave 30, okay? Let's have a look together what the output is. So uh, what we get is a chart with kind of weird bars. <laughs> Why? Because uh, with this kind of representation, we have a new bar forming. So basically, if a bar is still in uh, in play, we will get this bar closing and forming a new bar when the price has met those two parameters that we have indicated. So basically, price needs to move in one di direction for at least 15 ticks. And then, as to retrace 30 ticks because those were the two parameters that we have set. Okay. After those two parameters are, are satisfied, have met, those criteria are met, we have a new bar forming. Okay. This kind of representation allows us very easily to detect what? First of all, to easily uh, spot where market is trending with momentum phases or is going sideways. So basically, it is very easy to, uh, to make, uh, to spot where market is directional or where market is ranging. Uh, in turn, of course, this is a, a something made more schematic in terms of ticks. So we need to uh, have an idea what the average volatility in terms of ticks of that instrument is, because each instrument will have different um, settings to be uh, to be set in order to have a proper representation of the market in that in that in that in that case for example uh for nasdaq i would say 15 ticks as a target and 30 as a reversal are quite fair okay of course if we want to have the same uh output in terms of length of bar and uh, how really uh, range phases we will be getting from this kind of chart are reliable <laughs> uh, on the ES, maybe we will have to set a different, uh, different parameters because of course volatility, volatility is much different from the one of the NASDAQ. Okay, uh, of course, something really important to say about this 
representation is that uh, of course being bound to the thick value of both target and reversal uh, those bars will be completely unbound to time so basically we can have a new bar starting in one minute we might have the next bar lasting 30 minutes it depends how long market will take to uh to meet those criteria that we have set okay another another type of chart that we can choose is the rain chart so basically this kind of chart is still based on volatility but it works in a quite different way we just need to specify a range still expressed in ticks that we want to uh, have bar uh, represented so for example let's let's say 30 ticks and we will have a new bar creating after the current bar has gone for more than 30 ticks okay so basically we will have every single bar completely equal, equal to the previous one because of course this is the range that we have set but still we will have a new bar forming once from the open and the close of the next of the last bar 30 ticks range has been met okay uh so still in this case we will have maybe a bar that might be lasting one minute as in maybe in more volatile phases and in some other in some other times it can last 20 minutes because maybe market is going to be less volatile so it will take longer to uh go for 30 ticks from its open to its close of the bar okay uh then some other kind of chart we've got renko bars which it was quite similar to the range bar and then volume bars so in this case we will have a new bar forming after a specified volume has been traded so let's assume i want to uh put as a parameter here 1000 volume set yeah and as you can see we have every single bar as a total volume will have 1000 after 1000 volume within a candle has been traded then a new bar will be forming okay so for with this platform we really, really have many chances to represent charts according to the criteria we want to be focusing on okay um, let me just have a look at the chat okay um here is the link for the promotion. I have typed it into the chat once again. Um, what's your strategy to integrate trading? Let's say basically I'm a scalper. <laughs> so uh, I, I tend to take two points uh, trade on the ES and uh, five to 10 points trade on the NASDAQ. So basically, uh, let's say uh, I am a very patient trader Trader in terms of waiting for the correct setup, but I'm not at all a patient trader in terms of holding positions. <laughs> uh, but still, this is my, uh, this is my personal my personal choice actually uh i have uh three different strategies uh the first the, ma the main strategies is a scalp strategy uh and but also take i also do take and hold on uh, uh quick intraday trades uh so basically uh i i use a lot of volume profile a volume profile strategy we will which we will be talking about in a few in a few weeks, uh, which allows me to basically take inter quick intraday trades trades. So not properly, uh, so not 
real scalping trades, but let's say in a range of uh, maybe 30, 30 points of NASDAQ and uh, or five points of ES. And then swing position strategy with, I have to be honest, I don't mm, trade that much on that strategy because uh, it is something that you really have to wait uh, very, very patiently for setup. You have to wait uh, price coming on key levels. And of course, that doesn't happen every day. Or <laughs> uh, let's say swing position trades, I have something like maybe uh, two or three trades per month. So uh, I really wouldn't rely on that strategy for my uh, intraday income, which is the uh, something that I always I'm focused in the, at the first place on. Um, okay, uh, Hannah. Yeah, um, let me just check the settings because. There might be an issue with that. Uh, okay, so right now you all should be able to to see the link. I've just signed it. Um, okay, great, <laughs> great. Sorry, this is my first time uh handling a webinar through zoom so <laughs> some of the features are still unknown to me um free ansh ask uh, oh, if i spell properly your name i've pronounced properly your name what is your win percentage in intraday trading in volume profile uh let's say um i have an in in that kind of intraday uh strategy my win rate is around 70% in order to get a risk reward ratio of one to one, one to five. Okay. Uh, there, this is something quite important. I am uh, would like to quickly say right now, uh, every time we uh, plan our strategy, uh, we always need to remember that uh, win rate and a risk reward ratio they have to be unrelated each other because if we focus more on one of these aspects the other aspect will definitely decrease okay so if we want to give more uh, focus on on the win rate we can't expect a uh, 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 an incredibly high risk reward ratio and of course vice versa okay uh, so basically that let's say that i found my balance point between on having a 70 percent win rate on around getting a risk reward ratio of one to one one to one two and a half okay uh, in terms of scalping that's much much different because in that case uh my strategy uh is expected to have an 85 to 90 percent win rate uh but risk reward ratio is a bit lower so let's say one to 0 0.7 0 0.8 okay so i'm working with a negative risk to reward ratio but with a much higher win rate okay um so uh let's go on talking about some indicators uh we will go today we will go through the, the main basic indicators and how we can attach them to a chart first of all once you've got your chart open how would you access indicators but just by uh, right clicking here on the chart and you'll find the menu here on indicator and you will get the indicator list okay on the left side you have all the indicators divided into three categories so basically you can have them all displayed or you can choose 
to have displayed only volume-based indicators or the common indicators, okay? To easily attach them to the chart, all you have to do is selecting one like this, choosing add, and as you can see, indicator will be put here on the right column of the on the window okay that means that indicator has been successfully added to the to the chart and then after all we have to do is just closing here the the window and you, we can see that the moving average just a sample indicator has been added here to the chart unfortunately default color doesn't match very well with the background so uh, let's see together how we can change the settings for indicators so let's open again the indicator window uh, let's double click on moving average and there, then here we can see the settings specifically for that indicator uh, with parameters we can uh, choose whether we want uh, input data based on close of the candle, high, open, or volume. Uh, its length, of course, in this case, default uh, value is 21, 21 periods, and the type of moving average, which in this case we can choose between simple and exponential. Uh, we can even set an alert. So uh, basically, if the uh, moving average is touched, we can choose to uh, combine it with the sound. So an alert will uh, notify us that the, that indicate prices has, has come to touch that level expressed by the indicator. And then on subgraphs, the, on the tab subgraphs, then here we can choose the level, uh, the, the, sorry, the color of the indicator. So maybe since we have a, a gray gray background, maybe we can choose something more visible, like, for example, a white line. Here it is. Uh, so the interface is very user friendly, and very easy to use. And of course, if at a certain stage we won't want we don't want to use that indicator anymore, and we want it we want to remove it from the chart. All we have to do is to select it and then going remove. Okay, so we add that indicator uh, deleted from the chart. Uh, of course, these apply for all indicators here. Yeah, as you can see, I have plenty of <laughs> indicators attached to this chart because uh, this is a quite important chart for me as is the, the one I use for uh, for trigger purposes okay so uh i have put so much stuff here but <laughs> of course uh this is something you can completely uh customize as you want uh oh let me tell you about something uh, another very important uh feature of uh Volsys platform which is the uh annotation overlay uh function that means uh, it happens many times that maybe we want to uh, before start before we start trading we make the macro analysis on the uh, on a wider time frame so maybe 30 minutes one hour four hours it depends by your uh, trading plan and maybe we want to uh, draw some key levels that we want to pay attention to okay during our trading session uh, sometimes it happens that we draw we just draw the level but then this is this isn't the chart we will be using then for triggering so we need to remember what that key level we want you wanted to monitor was and then we have maybe to redraw it on another chart, the one we will be using for triggering, okay? Uh, this function is made very simple by 
Volsi's platform because uh, let's assume I want this line, this orange line I have drawn here on the chart I use for the trigger. Okay. What I can do is opening uh, the chart I want to use for that purpose. As you can see, the right the line is already there because function is already <laughs> activated. But what I let me just do that in front of you so you can yeah okay so I uh, I have drawn this line here okay so I'll just place it place it at the right level okay once price will get there. I will have to make some decision, okay? Because I want to, of course, using volume, using uh, maybe VWAP or volume profile or or the flow, uh, all the tools we will uh, step by step uh, talk about. We will be talking about uh, once price gets here. I have to validate this level, okay? So I need to keep it monitored. All I have to do is opening the chart I use for trigger purposes, right click here and the function and use the function. Uh, yeah, drawing tools from other chart. In this case, in the sub menu, I'll find all of the charts I have opened for this workspace, the one I was talking about at the beginning. Okay. And here I have to choose from which chart I want to basically copy and paste drawings here in this chart. I have selected a 30 minutes chart and here is the line being copied. And of course that will apply also to any modification I would make to the level. So let's say I've changed my mind and I don't want to place it here, but a few ticks lower. I will just move it here in the main chart and automatically it will be moved in the trigger chart as well. Okay. That would apply to all drawings. So basically uh, horizontal or vertical line or uh, parallel lines, rectangles, if I want to draw a range, so something like this, or um, if I want to put some text in the level, just to remember why I have selected that level. For example, if I think this level would act as a support, I can write it down here property text i want to write down whatever i want let's say support support level and i will find that here as well, and all I have to do is just change in the color because, of course, <laughs> the gray background doesn't help me in this in this case. <laughs> anyway, uh, <clears throat> another very important uh, drawing that we can make on the chart is uh, price retracement. Of course, if I, uh, if some of you are using. Fables. So you want to uh, calculate retracement levels. Of course, this is something you can do with the price retracement options. And going on property, you can choose either the color and the levels you want to see retracement you want to check for retracement so 38 percent 50 percent 
Sem personally, the only one I use is 76.4, and we will be talking about that one. We will be um, on the webinar about volume profile. And, uh, and then after, you can apply those edits by going save, apply, and save. So the indicator is attached and set according to your preferences. Uh, right, so uh, those are the... Uh, other, oh, something very important I also want to talk to you about very quickly, uh, since time is getting over. Uh, this is something that I'm really proud to present because I think none of the other <laughs> platform gets with such feature, which is money management. What is that? What do I mean with that? Uh, if we go to main menu options, and still options, uh, under the tab money management, this is here you can set a set of rules that will simply avoid you to trade after <laughs> some conditions in terms of maximum drawdown or a maximum number of trades taken are met. Okay, so for, for instance, uh, and this is something you can set broker by broker okay so if you have different accounts for each account you can set different rules for example let's assume you have a thousand dollar account of course you might want to set a maximum daily drawdown of 100 which is exactly uh the case of this example with cqg with cqg i have a uh, one thousand dollars account i've set $100 maximum daily drawdown or a maximum number of trades. In this case, I've set 10. So what happens basically? As soon as my account gets a drawdown of more than $100, every position is automatically flattened and if you tr manage to open a new position, the order just won't go through. So basically, it's just some is something that uh, is very very useful for those days when uh, when when somebody tries to break its own rules rules in terms of money management, in terms of number of trades taken, in terms of uh, revenge trading, of course, this is something very useful to avoid revenge revenge trading. And of course, there are so many other uh, some some many other uh, uh, criteria you can specify after that trading will be locked completely for that day. The for example here another condition I have uh, I have set is that I can only trade with this account, micro ES and micro NASDAQ uh, with three contract maximum for the micro ES and one maximum contract for the micro NASDAQ. Okay, so if I try to open maybe four contract of micro ES, the system just won't, won't let me do that. Okay, and this is also very useful in terms of, uh, first of all, edging or sometimes not closing position and adding position uh, to a losing one. And uh, it also helps maybe if we are in a losing, in a, in, in a losing streak and then we are tempted to open a position which is double <laughs> to the one was losing money with these um with these tools we simply can't do that so uh this is something very very important in my opinion in terms of um 
self-managing, money-managing, and therefore uh, manage, properly managing the enterprise of trading, okay, which is uh, with, which needs to be traded, treated as a business. Um, but then your question might, might be, if I just change the settings, I can still overcome the limits. Not really, <laughs> because once these settings are set, they can't be changed until the day after. So today, for instance, I have these criteria set. Even if I change them right now, changes will be uh, active from tomorrow on. So that completely uh, avoids uh, impulsive behaviors to be managing yourself. Okay, something really, really important in my opinion. Okay, um, let me just check if there is a, some question. <laughs> Very useful indeed. Revenge trading is an old film of mine. Yeah, uh, I have to be honest. I have to. I had to struggle with that a lot, <laughs> a lot. So, so that's yeah. Uh, I think this is something that uh, uh, for most of the time holds mm, most of us from profiting. Uh, most of our, most of us would be uh, profitable much, much earlier if we would be able to control ourselves, uh, <laughs> in especially during especially during uh, difficult days because in that moment uh, it, it's like it's like we get we, we get detached from reality from the perception of ourselves and what market is so uh, we are not objective anymore these tools helps us to keep objective okay and first of all it helps us to keep our money safe because if we can uh keep our uh our losses small they will be easier to recover them tomorrow but first of all it allows us to be in the market tomorrow and tomorrow and day after day okay uh so that's okay. I think we uh, are at the end of this webinar. Uh, from uh, next webinar on, we will be uh, starting to talk about uh, volume uh, volume strategies. So basically, from next time, uh, next time I will be talking about VWAP and its standard deviations and how they can be easily used. Uh, in order to build a trading strategy, and uh, I let me write down once again the, the link here in the chat. Looking forward for it. Thank you. <laughs> it's a. Uh, I'm so glad to uh, go through this serious webinar because uh, volume is something that. Uh, talking about volume, volume is never never enough <laughs> uh that's perfect okay so i'll i wish to all of you uh good evening thanks you i thank you for your attention and see you next time take care <laughs>